For a many-turn coil, the surface used to define the flux linkage is often geometrically complex. For this three-turn coil, the surface is filled in by stringing yarn between a vertical rod joining the terminals in the external region to points on the wire. The surface is filled in by connecting points on the rod to points of increasing distance along the wire. We have wound a few inductors of different lengths and number of turns on a wooden rod using copper wire covered with enamel insulation. The enamel insulation prevents electrical contact between turns, so the current path must follow the wire. The insulation prevents short-circuiting between turns. We will measure the coil inductances using this meter. We have twisted the terminal ends of this coil to reduce the stray inductance. It is wound on the non-magnetic rod, which has a radius of 5 millimeters. This coil has 50 turns and is 5.05 centimeters long. The coil inductance is predicted to be 4.9 microhenries. The inductance meter measures the coil inductance at 1 kilohertz. This frequency is high enough that the coil inductive reactance greatly exceeds the small coil of resistance, which we have neglected in our analysis. we measure 5.9 microhenries. This inductance has contributions from the coil and connecting wires. We short circuit the terminals and measure 0.7 microhenries as the lead inductance. Subtracting this from the measured 5.9 microhenries gives the coil inductance as 5.2 microhenries in reasonable agreement with the predicted 4.9 microhenries. We now measure the inductance of the coil with double the number of turns, but also double the length. Doubling the number of turns n, but also doubling the coil length d, should result in double the inductance. The inductance meter now reads 11.2 microhenries. Subtracting the 0.7 microhenry lead inductance gives corrected coil inductance of 10.5 microhenries, about double the inductance of the first coil of 5.2 microhenries, as it should be. We now measure the inductance of the coil, which is the same length as the second coil, but has two layers of windings and thus double the number of turns. We measure 44.4 microhenries, for which the corrected coil inductance is 43.7 microhenries. We have doubled the number of turns without changing the coil length. The coil area of the two-layer coil is hardly changed because the wire diameter is much smaller than the wood diameter used as a core form. The inductance should increase by four. This coil inductance is about four times our previous corrected measurement of 10.5 microhenries with half the number of turns. The surface for a many-turn coil used in Faraday's law is geometrically complex as the bounding contour to the surface follows the path of the wire. For a tightly wound coil, the magnetic flux linking this surface is the sum of fluxes linking each turn. Since the magnetic flux per turn is proportional to the number of turns, if each turn links the same flux, the total flux linked by the coil is n times the flux per turn. The coil self-inductance is then proportional to the square of the number of turns.